What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this really cool and easy big head effect in Final Cut Pro 10. I've been getting a lot of messages of uh, of you guys wanting me to do a big head effect, I suppose. Uh, and I've seen this in a couple of music videos that I've seen uh, on YouTube, of course of um of their heads you know getting you know getting enlarged and then shrinking or shrinking and, and whatever and vice versa so i'm gonna push play one more time as you can see here i just make what's his name ski masks uh head bigger and then smaller and it's so easy to do and it's just so simple of an effect that can make your music video look a lot more interesting and more fun if that makes sense so uh i'm sorry i haven't been making videos in the past couple of days i've actually been gone um, I've been with the Nelk Boys. If you guys do know who the Nelk Boys are, leave a like because they are honestly awesome. They're really awesome to hang out with. All right, so first things first, you want to have your music video, of course, into the timeline. And this one is Smoke. Uh, I keep saying Smoke Perp. It's not Smoke Perp, it's Ski Mask the Slump God. Um, his music video is really, really cool. I'll link it down in the description. It's by, uh, it's called Faucet Failure. It's directed by Cole Bennett. Uh, ly uh, lyrical Lemonade, amazing, amazing, talented, he's really talented by the way, um, amazing director and editor. Well, first thing you want to do is you want to select a part where you want to, you know, add this effect. Ideally, you want about five frames. Um, depending on the clip, you don't want anything that's moving too fast or too quickly in between a couple of frames. So right here is, is perfect, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, And I just added a marker by pressing M on the keyboard. And this will add markers if you if you press M, as you can see, it adds markers there. Before you do anything, we're gonna have to make a copy. So hold down Alt or Option and click and drag upwards. This will make a copy. And we're gonna be applying all of our effects on the top clip. All right, so first thing we wanna do is we're gonna go into the effects. We're gonna go down to Stylize uh, or Masks. And then we're gonna go to Draw Mask and drag that directly onto the, uh, onto the clip. And we're gonna make a selection of his head. Uh, you know, if, 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 if the artist is, is wearing something kind of complicated, it can make things a little harder. Or, I wouldn't say harder, just more time consuming, but that's that's fine. So we're gonna go here, and before we do anything, we're actually gonna go into, uh, well, we're gonna, yeah, let's go ahead and select his face first. So I'm gonna zoom into about 200%, and I'm gonna make a selection of his face. I'm gonna click and drag to make a smooth curve, kind of like you would in Photoshop, and just make a selection, ideally, um, you kind of want a background that is just like this one where it's very simple, not too, not too much going around uh, or nothing too much happening in the background because that can make things a lot, a lot harder. So I'm just going to go here, here, I don't know, I'm just going to kind of skim through, kind of eyeball it I suppose. And we're almost done here and I'm going to click the starting point. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click and click on smooth. And this will allow you to create a uh, some extra handles so you can smooth it out. So now we're gonna go to fit. And so now we have his face. You can always double check by clicking on the transform tool and making sure that it's just his face. So uh, once his face is selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, we're gonna go into the transform, which is here. We're gonna go click on transform and we're gonna click this plus icon in the scale all. So click this plus icon next to the 100%. We're gonna zoom in a little bit into the timeline here, and we're gonna move this right in to the closest frame that's in the middle. I'm gonna go maybe here, and from there I'm going to zoom this up to maybe 130%, nothing too much though. And then from here we're gonna go to the end here where I, I added my marker, and we're gonna go back to 100%. So now if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look like that, and honestly, you could be done at this point. Uh, however, if you want to really make it look a lot better, you can adjust the actual uh, frames, the individual points. So to do that, and if you want to make it really perfect, we're going to go into the draw mask and we're going to go on to where it says the control points. The control points will only um, affect where you move this. The transform is what it is. It's honestly the position and the rotation. So if you were to change the position of this like that, that is where you would want to do that. We're not going to be adjusting the transforms for the points. We're just going to be moving the control points. So we're going to click on this plus icon at our starting point where we added our markers. 
This can be completely different depending on how you added yours, but just click the plus icon to where you start the actual effect. Go frame by frame, and I'm gonna zoom in onto the canvas here to 200%, uh, and I'm actually maybe 150%. And then I'm gonna go and skim through by using the left and right arrow keys. There's only five frames, so there's not a lot of uh, a lot of stuff happening. But right here, you can see that kind of like a little bit of his face gets cut off. So we can easily adjust that by clicking on the individual point here and just moving it, and maybe over here as well. As you can see, the points start to move if you don't uh, add the keyframes so that they stay to the shape of his face. This is why you want a simple background because it would be hard to tell. You can also feather this outwards, but we're going to do that in the end. So I think that's pretty good. Sweet. So now we can go back to fit and then now we can go to our feather. If we click on this feather, you can feather this out to smooth the edges a little bit. So it looks a little bit more realistic. I would probably feather this outwards just a tad, maybe to 10. So I'm going to go back and I'm push play and you're going to see how this looks like and it looks perfect in my opinion. It looks super fun and yeah, so you can create some very interesting effects just by adding some keyframes and just I guess using your, your creativity. But yeah, if you guys found this simple and easy tutorial, please leave a like guys. Subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on a video like this and be sure to follow me on, on uh, Instagram at King Touch Pro to see, yeah, you know, just to see my, my stuff and whenever I'm going to be posting videos. So until then, peace out.